Hello everyone. If you want to grow the precious fruit of the Spirit, you first need good soil. If you have not already, please watch my four-part video series on how to establish your heart. You can find the links to them in the description below. Once the soil of your heart is good, then you can focus on growing precious fruit. Now I will share the revelation from the Word of God, which is the Bible, on growing the fruit of the Spirit. James 1 verses 22 through 25 says, But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty, and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. I want to jump right into the core of this teaching in order to make my point quickly. Psalms 1 verse 2 says, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. Psalms 2 verse 1 says, Why do the heathen rage, and the people imagine a vain thing? I want to point out the translation of the Hebrew word daga. This word is translated as meditate in Psalms 1-2, but translated as imagine in Psalms 2-1. From this you can see that meditate is to imagine, or to imagine is to meditate. The primary way to be a doer of the Word of God, and not just a hearer, is to meditate upon the Word in your heart. Did you know that meditation upon the Word or imagining the Word is the same as doing it, according to the Bible? To prove this point, let's look at Matthew 5, verses 27 through 28. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery, but I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Or how about 1 John 3:15a, which says, everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. This works the same with the word of God. If you meditate upon the word, you are doing the word. The word is seed, and when the word is implanted in your heart, you must focus your attention upon it by taking the time to meditate upon or imagine what the word looks like. You do not want to be like the person who looks at themselves in a mirror and forgets who they are after they walk away. The key to producing great results and growing the fruit of the Spirit is meditation. You should be dreaming the word at night and acting upon the word by day. As a practical example, you can imagine the love of our Father in heaven and how he saved us through the precious blood of Christ Jesus. This example can be your dream. Then in the day, you can tell others about the love of God. Okay, so we must do the word and not just hear it. So how does doing the word grow the fruit of the Spirit? Let's look at Luke 17, verses 5 through 10. The apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. And the Lord said, If you had faith like a mustard seed, you would say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Which of you, having a slave plowing or tending sheep, will say to him when he has come in from the field, Come immediately and sit down to eat? But will he not say to him, Prepare something for me to eat, and properly clothe yourself, and serve me while I eat and drink, and afterward you may eat and drink. He does not thank the slave, because he did the things which were commanded, does he? So you too, when you do all the things which you are commanded, you say, We are unworthy slaves, we have done only that which we ought to have done. After reading these verses, we see that the increase in faith the apostles were talking about was not the gift of faith. Christ Jesus was referring to the fruit of faith, since he mentioned faith like a mustard seed. He then explained increasing the fruit is done by serving the master food first, then after you serve the master, then you can eat. 
So what does this mean? Let's now look at John 4, verses 32 through 34. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples were saying to one another, No one brought him anything to eat, did he? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Jesus lived the life of having abundant fruit. When you are obedient to the will of God, then you bear good fruit. You can eat from this fruit after you serve the master his portion. If you think this sounds crazy, then read Revelation 3, verse 20, which says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and will dine with him and he with me. The Lord Christ Jesus wants to dine with us. This is what relationship looks like. John 15, verse 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Once we bear much fruit, then we will have something to serve our master to eat and have food for ourselves to eat too. Just like what we saw in Luke 17 verse 8. Let us now go back to the heart for further clarification. When you meditate upon something in your heart or imagine it, it is the same to God as actually doing it. When you dream at night, do your dreams line up with the seed of the implanted word of God, or do your dreams line up with thorns, which are lies? If you want to see the fruit of the Spirit increase greatly in your life, then you need to control every thought and imagination of your heart as mentioned in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, which says, Casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. When you look at 1 Corinthians 13 verses 1 to 3, you see a picture of someone that has the gifts of the Spirit, but does not have the fruit of the Spirit. They seem to be doing the Word of God, but they really are not doing the Word. The seed of the word is not manifesting in their life. This person is operating from thorns in their heart. I'm pointing this out to show how important it is to meditate upon the word or the seed in your heart and see it grow precious fruit to completion. It is easy to be deceived into believing you are doing the seed of the word when you are actually doing a thorn of a lie. Remember, Jeremiah 17 verse 9 says, the heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I will now summarize what I believe is the most important part of this video. Meditating upon the Word ends up with action from the fruit of the Spirit. Not meditating upon the Word, but attempting to do the Word, ends up with action from the flesh. In other words, if you meditate upon the Word, then you abide in the Word. When you abide in the Word, you will bear precious fruit. If you do not meditate upon the Word, then you do not abide in the Word, and you will not be successful in obtaining good fruit. If we truly want to obey Christ in order to bear the precious fruit of the Spirit, then we must watch every thought. I want to end this video with Psalms 1, verses 1 to 3. How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither, and in whatever he does, he prospers.